so you want to help monarch butterflies and you're thinking about starting a monarch butterfly garden or maybe you already know that you're supposed to have a lot of milkweed and you're gonna start a milkweed garden well you're in luck today because what we're gonna be covering is 10 tips to attract more monarchs to your milkweed garden Tip number one. Tip number one has to do with host plant. When it comes to butterflies, most can only put their eggs and their caterpillars can only eat a certain type of plant. And when it comes to monarchs, it has to do with milkweed. Now, when it comes to picking out a milkweed for your garden, there are so many types. Actually, for the United States, there are over 100 native species, which can be a bit overwhelming to figure out which is the right type for you. And the reality is, is what's right for you is not the same plant that's probably right for me. So I live down here in Florida and a great plant for us is swamp milkweed. But for other regions in the United States, that may not be the best choice because that's not what grows there natively. So when it comes to picking out your milkweed, pick native first. Now I could sit here and try to list out a hundred different types of milkweeds and which region they go to, but instead what I'm going to do is I'll put a link down in the description and a link down as a pinned comment to a website that is run by a monarch organization that shows what are the best type of native milkweeds per region. So check that out in order to figure out what's best for you. Tip number two, when it comes to picking out a native milkweed, while you have a lot of choices for each region, the research shows that the best type of milkweed for you to pick for your region is the broadleaf types. Now I'm not talking about broadleaf milkweed necessarily, but milkweeds that have wider leaves. What researchers found is that when it came to the monarchs, they put more eggs per square inch on these broadleaf milkweeds. So when it comes to picking it out, there's kind of the big five for milkweeds that are found in lots of regions. And that would be broadleaf milkweed, common milkweed, butterfly weed, showy milkweed, and swamp milkweed. These big five, while many of them can be one or two of these might be native to your region, would be the preferred choice to help your monarchs lay lots and lots of eggs. Tip number three, we talked about which plants to pick, but let's talk about one we should take a pass on, and that's gonna be tropical milkweed. Tropical milkweed comes out of Mexico, which you may be thinking, well, don't all the monarchs go down there? And they do, but there's two kind of issues that we see with this milkweed up in the United States. One is that it doesn't follow the natural cycle of the milkweed that's native to the area. And that may seem like, well, that's great because then we'll get more caterpillars and more eggs and more monarchs. Yes, but because it doesn't die back, that's the signal for the monarchs to head on south and head towards Mexico. But this plant's not gonna do it the right way and the monarchs are gonna stick around. So all that work that you did to help increase the population is lost because that first cold snap wipes out the monarchs. Now you can cut back your tropical milkweed when you see your native milkweeds are dying back and that's a good way if you already have it in your yard to help control that. The second issue though is that OE. Now there's a lot of debate between researchers on how bad this is or isn't. Some say it has to really do with the tropical milkweed lingering especially in southern states through the winter months that really can help increase the damage it causes to our monarch populations. But the reality is, is that OE parasite is there and could create potential issues. So until the researchers come up with a firm answer, again, let's pick the natives because we're sure that those are gonna be healthy and helpful for our monarch population. So while you're still at the store looking over those milkweeds, but you haven't cashed out at the register, well, let's talk about tip number four. How many milkweeds should you buy? Well, I will tell you, there is a definite wrong answer and that answer is zero. Zero is a terrible answer but the next worst answer is one milkweed plant. I've experienced this and enough people I've watched experience this and some of the butterfly gardening groups, they buy one plant, those first eggs hatch, you get your first set of caterpillars and boom, that milkweed is gone. And now all of a sudden you have these caterpillars who don't have a food source and that milkweed cannot grow fast enough in order to deal with the eggs and the population of caterpillars you got. So one is the wrong answer. And based on my experience, I would recommend at the bare minimum, you get four plants. This seems to be kind of the happy tipping point based on just experience for the caterpillars eat it back, but you're not gonna lose all your caterpillars. Honestly, I would go with six. Now, depending on what type of milkweed you get, these plants become huge. It really depends, but they oftentimes, if they're not established, can't grow fast enough. So it's better to get six or four milkweeds that you have a little too much later on and you pull one, then go through the stress of getting those first sets of milkweed and 
you're just gonna be miserable, honestly. And for all my other experienced butterfly gardeners, go ahead and put in the comments down below, how many milkweeds would you recommend people get the first time they buy milkweed? And while I still got you at the store, I think this is the last tip for the store. It's tip number five. Well, you gotta buy some other wildflowers or flowering nectaring plants. Cause the reality is, is that in tip number five, researchers found that if they only did a milkweed garden for monarchs versus a garden that had both milkweed and other wildflowers or had plantings of milkweed plus other flowers very close by, that the monarchs preferred and laid more eggs and had more caterpillars, therefore on the mixed wildflower group. It seems kind of the opposite opposite of what you would think, but the reality is, is because of caterpillars, oftentimes those flowers that milkweed can produce get eaten pretty fast, which doesn't often leave as many nectar producing flowers for your monarch. So by having something that has a lot of different types of flowers, different colors, different shapes, this allows that variety, which is the spice of life for your monarch butterflies and gives a little bit more protection also for your caterpillars because there's a lot of other plants that are not having little caterpillars on them to protect them from some of the predatory animals. And now that you have all these plants for your milkweed garden, is there anything else that you need to do in order to help bring in more butterflies? And the research is in, and that brings us to tip number six, Yes, yes, there is another thing that you can do. Besides those mixed flowers and having the native milkweed, there is another thing and it is mulch. Mulching, while it has a lot of benefits like suppressing weeds and holding moisture, and it can just create a nicer, tidier look that a lot of neighborhoods tend to prefer, it actually helps butterflies, monarch butterflies, find your butterfly garden more easily. And when it comes to tip number seven, because you lay down all this fabulous mulch, you won't have as many weeds and your plants won't be as stressed because they have the water they need, which helps prevent different types of pests. But here's the thing. We've talked a lot about what you should do. Let's talk again about something you shouldn't do and that's use pesticides. Because when plants are stressed, especially right after you put them in, you're probably gonna get some aphids, especially things like swamp milkweed tend to, right after getting planted, get a rash of aphids. And one of the worst things you can do is spray pesticides. Whether it's herbicides for weeds in the area or pesticides for various different types of bugs on your plants, this is a terrible idea because they are not very forgiving and they will definitely kill a lot of your caterpillars. Now you may have tried this before and you saw caterpillars hatch and you saw them for a little bit and then they disappeared. Oftentimes your eggs will hatch, but what will happen is you'll see if you see caterpillars starting to twitch and vomit, that is because of their exposure to pesticide. And now the question is, where do you plant your butterfly garden? Now you probably have a spot picked out, but one of the things that will help the most with your butterfly garden is tip number eight, plant it in full sun. Most milkweeds that are native to the United States like full sun. That's right, they don't want any shade. Now there are a few types that will deal with semi-shade and can go into full shade, but they're not as common. Those big five like swamp milkweed, broadleaf milkweed, common milkweed, butterfly weed, and showy milkweed like full, full sun. So when looking in your garden, go and find a spot with full sun. Now everybody doesn't always have a place that they can get a lot of sun for their butterfly garden, but consider that you can also put a butterfly garden in a container and get a lot of the same results. And now tip number nine, when we're looking for that location for your butterfly garden, some interesting research has come out and the fact is, is that if your garden has access from the north to the south, the butterflies will prefer it. I know, I don't know if it has to do with their migratory patterns or just that they like to kind of line themselves up with the poles, but if you have structures that are blocking northern or southern sides, you may find that the butterflies aren't as interested in it. So if you can find a location like this where they can move from north to south, you should get even more monarch butterflies. And let's get into tip number 10. And this is the hardest tip for those who are starting their first monarch butterfly gardens. And that is let nature be. One of the hardest things to deal with is that you have caterpillars that are super cute and then they get eaten by a wasp or a lizard or a bird or some other animal. And the reality is, is that you're going to want to do something about it. And if you're not hand raising caterpillars, which has its own challenges with diseases and things like that, you're going to lose a bunch of them, especially in the beginning, because when the milkweed is small, it allows for these predators to get in pretty easily and it doesn't create enough shelter for most of your caterpillars to make it. But that's how nature works. And while that feels really harsh and you are wanting to help the monarchs, I'd also like you to think about the fact that the reason we put a lot of attention on monarch butterflies, besides the fact that they're gorgeous, is they represent a problem that's happening to a lot of wildlife. 
birds, bees, lizards, and wasps are all fighting the same kind of challenges that monarchs are fighting, but it's just they're not as cute and pretty, so we don't pay as much attention. So by you helping monarch butterflies, you're actually helping a whole bunch of wildlife. So in the beginning, while it's hard to deal with, let nature be. In the long run, you will help the monarch population. If one caterpillar becomes a butterfly in those first few months, you have already made a difference. And while you spend a lot of money and time and effort to help these monarch butterflies, in the beginning, it can be quite challenging to let them get eaten by other wildlife. But stay the course. I Trust me, it will get better. And you will start to see more and more monarchs coming to your yard, and you'll be doing your part to help increase the monarch population. And now that you've got your monarch butterfly garden, you're probably thinking, uh, I want to know more about butterfly gardens. And if you do, go ahead and check out this video on avoiding the four most common mistakes that people do with new butterfly gardens. Or if you want to figure out some other host plants so that you can get other types of butterflies, check out this video. Or you want to go and just bring in lots and lots of butterflies, check out this video for some plant ideas. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.